Hi everyone, Jim here from Culture Coffee Bean. Today we have Frank Weber, the owner of Tea Square, here today at Culture Coffee Bean to talk about tea and how to make great tea. Great, Frank, thank you. welcome. Well, thank you, Jim. It's a pleasure being here. Actually, it's a common misconception that making a good cup of tea is cumbersome or takes a long period of time. It's actually really easy. I'll show you a couple of simple tricks and we'll take it from here. First of all, of course, the quality is a, is a big factor in making a uh, good cup of tea. Um, what you want to do is you, uh, you want to use a full leaf, uh, really high quality, uh, which you'd find in our T-squared products. And then um, the vessel plays, uh, obviously plays a semi-important role as well. And then the water quality. Those are really the three factors. So let's start with um, how simple it really is. So general rule of thumb is you want to use about a teaspoon for an 8 ounce cup. So if you have a larger mug, use one and a half or two. This pot here is about a liter, so that means it's about four. So I'm going to use about four teaspoons of this. This is a fruit tea, so with a fruit tea they're a little bit chunkier. I usually use just a little bit more. And then all you really have to do is pour your hot water over it. So when using the water for different types of teas, um, what is important to consider is that different teas like a different steeping times and they also like um, different water temperatures. But it's very simple. It's not really rocket science. Green teas use water below the boiling point. So if the kettles come to a boil, just give it a minute, let it cool down a little bit, 80, 90 degrees. You don't need a thermometer or anything. And then just pour it over the leaves. Give it about one to three minutes. So green teas, a little cooler water, one to three minutes. Black teas, full boil, three to five minutes. And then herbal or fruit teas like this, a full boil as well, but they don't get bitter. So you can just leave them in here and actually serve them. You can bring them to the table, 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, they'll still be beautiful. If you do have a green or black tea, you obviously want to remove this infuser after the one to three minutes for green or the three to five minutes for black tea. So um, when it comes to the water, we have great water here. Uh, the tap water is quite fine. It's even better if you can use filtered water. Don't use um, distilled water because there's no minerals in it, there's no life in it. So the second part is the quality of the tea. And that's where the loose leaf teas come in. So when we're talking about loose leaf tea, it's called an orthodox style tea leaf. So what happens is that these teas are only made from the two leaves and the buds, the younger shoot of the plant. And that's really important because every plant on earth pushes all the nutrients into the youngest shoot so they can survive and grow. So they contain the highest concentration of everything good. They contain the highest concentration of antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, but also the most complexity in flavor. So that's where the really good quality tea comes from. So all our teas from Tea Squared are two leaves in a bud and then they're harvested and they're made into either green, black, oolong teas and, um, and so forth. With commercial tea bag production, you, you don't get that. You get the larger, older leaves. Think of baby spinach. You can eat it raw, it's tender, it's sweet. The larger, older leaves, you cook with them because you can't really eat them raw. They're chewy, they don't taste as good. So tea plant is the same thing. You use the older or larger leaves. They don't have the complexities in flavor. They don't have the nutrients. And it makes a completely different type of product. I've always asked about <coughs> caffeine and tea. Mm -hmm. yes. Which teas don't have caffeine? Is there such a tea? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the teas from the tea plant, Camellia sinensis, the tea bush, will make either white tea, green tea, oolong, black tea, or puer. So there's five categories that can be made from that one plant. Um, all of these would naturally contain some caffeine. It's far less than coffee, so about a third to half of what you'd find in a cup of coffee. Um, but all these teas that have the tea leaf in it would naturally have caffeine. You can get a decaffeinated version of that, or you have so many choices in, in fruit teas like this, for example. There are many herbal teas out there. There is um, there's an abundance of choices. Rooibos is a great plant. It's caffeine-free, really high in antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. Green tea, though, green tea does have caffeine. Right? Green tea does have caffeine, caffeine. About a third of what you find in a cup of coffee. So about 30 milligram, 35 milligram, over 120 to a cup of coffee. Green tea is maybe yeah. 45 to 50. So yeah, it's a stimulant. The L-theane in tea works a little bit different than the caffeine in coffee. It actually um, it actually stimulates the central nervous system, so it stimulates your alpha brain waves, which makes you alert but calm. So you don't have that that jolt, but you feel alert and kind and of relaxed at the same time. Wow, yeah. interesting. Yeah. What about equi uh, What's the best equipment to use when making great tea? Good question. I mean, there's some um, obviously this with loose leaf. It's there are many choices. You can also some of our teas come in the pyramid tea bags if you're for the convenience and uh, and the quickness factor. What we use is the same quality leaf that you'd find in. What's the material of that bag? Um, it's a uh, it's a um, rice starch based material, so it's gluten free and it's biodegradable. 
So when it comes to making loose leaf tea, it really is quite simple. Um, there are many choices. We have we have these type of mugs, for example. So I like these a lot for traveling myself, or just to get out of the house. Just you know, add a heaping teaspoon of tea. This is about 16 ounces. I'd add a heaping teaspoon. Put the water on it, and then just close the lid. Leave it for a little bit, and then after a few minutes, you can push it down, and the leaves will stay below the waterline, and you can enjoy the tea. This works really well for most teas, I would say 99% of teas. Some green teas that are very finicky, that get bitter very quickly, not so great. But for most black teas, most scented green teas, herbal teas, and so forth, this is a great solution. I have one of these, I actually have a few of these, and um, they are really, they're really fantastic. The, the, the travel, or the, the boat and presses are a beautiful uh, solution as well. And you know what I like these for? I like these for making uh, chai lattes. I think it's really awesome. So what we chai, do... Chai's been very fun. Very much so. What we do is basically we just, we just put a... This is a liter as well, so again, it's not rocket science. So you put a maybe four for a latte. I basically maybe put to five. taste. Yeah, maybe put five for tea. Yeah, tea, tea I always encourage customers to experiment with the amount of tea you use or even coffee for that matter. There's yeah, really no right or wrong. That's true. I mean, there really isn't, and it's not that difficult. So, and if you get it too weak one time, you know better for the next. It's, right. it's really, it's up, like you said, it's for taste. But to make a latte, for example, I would add the tea leaves. I'd add some sugar right now because it is nice to have that, that fuller body. Really, you put it in before you I put add the hot water. Yeah, because when I put the hot water in right now over the over the leaves and the sugar, two things will happen. The sugar will melt very quickly because the hot water is boiling, right? And then the leaves will bloom, they open up with a, with a 100 degree water, they open up much more than if I put hot milk on it. Hot milk will not be 100 degrees, right? So I would fill it up properly to about to here with hot water, Give it a swirl, let the sugar melt, let the leaves bloom, and then add my add my hot milk. Put put it on top, let it steep for a few minutes, maybe give it five minutes or so, and then you're ready to serve. Just off you go. Really easy and really tasty, and so much better than what you find in coffee shops with high sugar content. I mean, here you put maybe two teaspoons of sugar on the liter, and it makes a big difference. Yeah. As far as the temperature of the water, if you use the ABT, it should be boiling water. I mean, you you should have boiling water for uh, black teas or for fruit teas. You have some great equipment here, some some pots that uh, really help you with gauging the temperature, that have temperature controls on it. So I would recommend a tool like that because it just takes all the, the guesswork out of it. And it makes it really easy. Frank, that's wonderful. I really appreciate you coming today to Culture Coffee Bean and giving us a tea demonstration. Thank you. Bye-bye.